secret place you can beg and torture me I wouldn't tell you where to go it's a secret place secret place secret you know secret place a secret you know Once we cut it off, it won't grow back. I mean, it isn't like hair, fingernails, or toenails, you know. What do you think I am, some kind of idiot? I know that. How about circumcision? It'd be cheaper. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get it over with. Myra's waiting. We'll have to blow up your tits for silicone. How about they use paraffin? No, that would make them inflammable. You don't want inflammable tits now, do you? I got a secret place known to none. Three me. I mean, and stop in my it. secret. Well, I should think so. Well, wish me luck. I've never done one of these before. You can beg and torture me. I wouldn't tell. You know American song? Yes, I do. It's called you got a S M I L E. If something may upset you. Don't ever let it get you down Or wear a frown If fortune should forsake you Don't ever let it make you sigh Keep shooting high Be a crooner, not a groaner Never kick Here's a spelling lesson that will do the trick You've got to S-M-I-L-E to be H A double B Y. Keep it in mind when you're blue. It's easy to spell and just as easy to do. You've got to S M I L E. It's gonna help consider blue. Just keep your chin up and give it a try. And you'll find silver lined clouds in the sky. You've got to S M I L E. To be H A double P Y. Ladies and gentlemen, just for fun, I'd like to sing the song again the way it would be done by Al Jolson, Eddie Cannon. And last but not least, that swingable pair, Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. You've got to S M I L E. Oh, like the birdies, pretty birdies up in the trees. Pretty flowers, April showers. My mammy. Why? 
life is divine and a quarter to nine. You simply gotta S-N-I-L-E Cause potatoes are cheap for you see. I won't spend a nickel, I won't spend a sou. I just wanna spend one hour with you. S-N-I-L-E Park your carcass with Ida Man me I am Myra Breckenridge, whom no man will ever possess. The new woman whose astonishing history started with a surgeon's scalpel and will end who knows where. Just as Eve was born from Adam's rib, so Myron died to give birth to Myra. Did Myron take his own life, you will ask? Yes and no is my answer. Beyond that, my lips are sealed. Let it suffice for me to say that Myron is with me and that I am the fulfillment of all his dreams. Who is Myra Breckenridge? What is she? Myra Breckenridge is a dish. And don't you ever forget it, you motherfuckers, as the children say nowadays. Don't mother me. It seems to be coming this way. Oh. My purpose in coming to Hollywood is the destruction of the American male in all its particulars, starting with my late husband's uncle, the notorious Buck Loner, who squats in unashamed luxury as the head of a dramatic school in fashionable Westwood. A tree! An actor can learn from everything, including a tree. You must learn to experience the truth of a tree, to make it work for you, to use it to know its beauty. This tree! God damn it! Ah, oh, Myra, baby, I say to myself. Half of all of this will soon be yours. How do you do? Come right on in, little lady. Take the weight off them pretty little feet while I finish my last bow back to the old corral. So, you want to be a star? It's a hard road, and I feel I should say no siree. But something... Something about you tells me I should give you a chance. What do you say? Can you take the uh, heartache and the torture and the heat of them five kilowatt lamps over at MGM? <laughs> Where I sit, I'd say you can. I can see your name in lights now. Fact is, you remind me of a certain one of our former successful students, a Miss Gloria Swanson. You've heard the name, I'm sure. You mean she was one of your students? You bet your sweet ass. <laughs> Fact is, my students is always saying, Uncle Buck would want for you. We'd still be warm in that seat back in Schwab's drugstore. Really? I thought that was where Lana Turner was discovered. Her too. Her too. Well, I'll be gall dirt. <laughs> you really done your homework. Yes, little lady. Lana Turner put her sweet little fanny right where you're sitting now. Lana, I says, what say we put you in a sweater and make a movie? And we did. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, honey? Myra Breckenridge. Uh, that's my long for... Breckenridge? 
Yes, I'm the widow of your late nephew, Myron, and I've come to collect a half a million dollars. Estate. Irretrievably. I'm right sorry to hear that. I never knew Gertrude's boy had such an eye for a feminine pulchritude. Oh, Mr. Loner, you're the only one I have left to turn to. You see, Myron didn't leave me a penny. Um, no insurance? Safety deposit box, maybe. No. I'm absolutely alone. <laughs> And penniless. <laughs> Mr. Loner, Gertrude, Myron's mother, said to me with her dying breath, Myron, and you too, angel girl, if anything should ever happen to me, you just go to your Uncle Buck and you tell that son of a bitch, well, I'm quoting now verbatim, that that property in Westwood was left to us jointly by our father. And you tell that bastard... <laughs> Then I've got a copy of that will, and I want my share to go to you, Myron, because that property must be worth a good million dollars by now. Well, now, how about that? I conclude he left a last will and testament. Yes, leaving the whole of his estate to me. So I suppose that half this place must be mine. Um, will you know something, uh, Myra? The uh, school ain't doing too good. We can see it through together, Uncle Buck. Why, as partners... Partners? Uh, now, look, my I'm pleased as all get out. You come to cry on my shoulder, seeing this life's kicked you in the horse trough and blood's thicker and sarse blood, but <laughs> I don't need no partners. <laughs> the price for my share has just gone up another $100,000. I'm sorry, Uncle, but I expected more from the star of Wild Bill's last roundup and cuckoo calls in the Everglades, but it seems I was wrong. Perhaps my lawyers will speak a tongue you'll comprehend. Myra, 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 what a spit licking horny toad I'd be to let you walk out of here without making some contribution like to the family pork and beans. What kind of a contribution? All this talk about lawyers and settlements and wills and testaments goes clean over my head. I'll be in kissing Kim and all. Well, I'd be overjoyed if you'd share my vittles and break bread with my wife, Bobby Dean, and me. Only thing she, uh, Poison herself on some homemade guacamole, and uh, she's uh, laid up like for a month or two. I can tell there's Breckenridge blood flowing in them veins. Ha <laughs> do you think I throw the widow Gertrude's boy out into the dog patch? I am prepared to accept a position here on the faculty. I took the liberty of picking up a brochure on the way in. Posture and empathy should do nicely. I'm eminently qualified to teach both. Say a thousand a month. Um, posture and empathy is a subject the uh, students badly need at 800 a month. A uh, thousand. Only on condition you don't tell the other teachers how much you're getting. You have my word, Uncle. Uncle? Uh, we're busy, Irvin. Is this your new masseuse? My niece, Miss Maya Breckenridge, will be teaching empathy and posture. Delicious. How much are you getting? A thousand a month. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? Still, we all love it here, don't we, Uncle? Nobody ever leaves. I've been here for 14 years. What do you teach? I don't teach, I'm a student. Teachers last about as long as Brillo pads, and students stay on forever and ever. You see, Maya, we uh, try to build up the confidence of the students so they don't want to leave. That right? That don't sound right. Of course. Who'd want to leave where he's happy? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, right, that's right. That's terrible. Hold your horses, Maya. I'm taking into account her uh, recent and most tragic loss. Uh, what did you lose, dear? Her husband. Careless. Uh, Irvin, I'm uh, sure Miss Maya would appreciate a tour around the old corral. Who the? I'd ride with you, partner, except uh, my chiropractor's due in to fix my back. Oh, what's wrong with your back? Is it fatal? Ah, you sure got a sense of humor, Byra. <laughs> you ought to take it up professionally. I bet around the country there are lots of openings for your style of humor. <laughs> Those shoulders broad and glorious. See that smile, that smile's notorious. You can bet your eyes, the man's in the Navy. See those nice blue trousers walk about. That that salty walk they talk about. Mr. Watch your wife, the man's in the Navy. Oh, 
mimetic pantomime in which he saw straight through the strenuous clowning to the hard fact that American women are eager for men to rape them, and vice versa. And that in every American there is a strangler longing to break a neck during orgasm. What in hell is that woman talking about? During the decade between 1935 and 1945, no unimportant film was made in the United States. During those years, the entire range of human, which is to say American legend, was put on film. Remind me to have my masseuse come in at five instead of six as I'm getting horny watching my niece on TV. and go into the real world. Oh, some of them leave, sure. Like they have to get money to pay the fees. It's very expensive. Is your name really Irving? Irving Amadeus. <laughs> That's a Jewish name. Yes, it? I know. I used to be Jewish before I was transmogrified. And now I just eat nuts and raisins and play Scrabble with my guru. To today's class on cinema lovemaking. <laughs> on bawling. <laughs> Just take off your clothes and get in bed, dear. Now we need a ballsy young man with a lover. Come on up. And you are irate. You're bugged. You think that she is the lowest slut, the worst. You also want to uh, get in bed with her. Now you hold it. Yeah. Yeah. And you look into his eyes and you say, no, it's all your imagination. I've never been to bed with any man. Why, you're on drugs. How could you do this to me? You bitch. All your imagination. That's very good. <laughs> Maybe we should. Congratulations, Lance. Thank you. Thank you. Here at the academy, are not interested in teaching the students to be successful. We feel that it's our responsibility to... But you're a fag, aren't you? Well, uh, what do you... I don't know. I mean, in the Baha'i faith. You see, Uncle Buck is convinced that group therapy and self-criticism are the key to successful acting. Personally, I think if everybody ate macrobiotic foods, there'd be no more Bitch! Wars. I should have put it to her when she first come in. Threw her on her back and give her the old buck loaner special right there in the rug. Goddamn smart mouth broad. Memo to Flagler and Flagler attorneys. Dear Charlie. Hmm, honey, that feels real good. Uh, cut that. Dear Charlie, problems come up in which I need your thinking. Mm-hmm. A woman showed up today who says she is the widow to my nephew Myron. Now, this woman claims she has a right to half my property, which did at one time belong to my sister Gertrude and me, but is now mine all mine if there's any justice in this world now charlie it's up to you to see i get the best justice money can buy uh, honey that is simply wonderful hmm uh, strike that uh, not me flag let's go inside and watch some of the fundamentals of acting class he's dirty and greasy i can't stand him he's always hitting on me in rehearsals and grabbing and groping me. I want you to build the vibe between you by closing your eyes and touching each other. I can't stand to have this creep touch me. Now we're getting someplace. Real honesty for the first time. Bring back star quality. 
You simply must understand that that pseudo-analytical group therapy approach to acting may be all right for naturalistic theater. A quaint, amiable convention with little or no significance. But it has little what? to do with... In my posture class, I was particularly struck by one of the students, a boy with a Polish name. From a certain unevenly rounded thickness at the crotch of his blue jeans, it is safe to assume that he is marvelously hung. Unfortunately, he's hot for an extremely pretty girl with long blonde hair. Dyed. Beautiful legs and breasts. Reminiscent of Lupi Valles. She is mentally retarded. He is probably just as stupid, but fortunately has the good sense not to talk too much. When he does, however, he puts on a hillbilly accent that is so authentic that I almost melt in my drawers. I didn't understand a word you said, but whatever it was, I'm right with you. <laughs> well, I'm certain that regular attendance in my classes will help even the most limited intelligence. Wait a minute, what you mean by limited intelligence? <laughs> Myra, when you was it at the cinema? Howdy, kids! Howdy! <laughs> See you all met Myra. Uh, how's the boy, Russell? Great, Uncle Buck, just great. <laughs> ah, well, how's the workouts coming? Great, I've been concentrating on my last lately, and they're coming along real nice. <laughs> well, give us a flex, why don't you? Get it on, baby. Come on, a quickie. Wow, look at that, man. Eh? Great. Beautiful. Great. Just great, great, great. Great bunch of boys here. Of course, you get the occasional weirdo, but uh, greatest bunch of kids in Hollywood. Bread. I'm certain of that. The drivel in their heads must have been patiently instilled by the faculty. Now, wait a minute. Meyer, the faculty may be a bunch of commies and fags. No offense, Irvin. But uh, they're all <laughs> eminently qualified. Yes, it's a dance act for the manager clinic, but their collective knowledge could be inscribed in the... I hope to see you all in class. Ahead of a pin. She's, um... She's from New York. May I? Myra! Myra! Myra, I can't have you talk like that in front of the kids. It'll shake their faith in the school. Oh, nothing could shake the simple faith these deluded bunnies have in you, Uncle Buck. I can't relate to her. Huh. You don't want to make it with her, do you? Forget it. You don't have to worry about her. She turns me off completely. Well, I don't want to make any charges. It may not be a conspiracy at all. Conspiracy, I should have known. Every one of them is some kind of lefty. I mean, man, I never heard anybody rap like that, man. I mean, I mean, she just... Got right into it, man, and rap. I don't know. She's weird, you know? I mean, I, I like her, but she's weird. I bet a couple of sessions in the old exercise program straighten her out pretty good. Old Buckle and her special would shape her up real good. God knows she wants it. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'll go and finish my makeup. <laughs> Miss Van Allen is on her way up. I'll be right with you, boys. Get your resumes out. Ooh, got a big mark, and I'm a little tired today. One of those guys will have to go. Four or five with brown suits. Oh, the brass buttons, yes, I see. Uh, she'll see you. Yes, you. squeeze I let him have it in the belly well I don't care about your credits as long as you're over sexed oh that's one of my credits a bed I never did see a bed in an office before well, you see I uh, I do a lot of night work sometimes come here
Don't work any harder than you have to for these blues. I won't. How's this? Perfect. You impressed me immensely. I'll keep you in mind as a summer replacement. Uh, next. of another busy day. I can't wait till I get back to bed. If that don't work, I'll try and sleep. Mm, hi, cowboy. How tall are you without your horse? Well, ma'am, I'm six feet seven inches. Well, <clears throat> never mind about the six feet. Let's talk about the seven inches. Mm -hmm. You'll never know if an apple is sweet unless you bite it. Those were the days, Spike Jones and his city slickers, Ida Ray Hutton and her all-girl band. And, of course, the Andrews sisters. Well, there'll never be anyone like them. The decline in our music saddens me. Nearly as much as the decline in our films. I've never heard of any of these people. <laughs> but, my dear, they were unique, truly mythic. Why, the Andrews sisters really did roll out that barrel. And no one yet has ever rolled it back. Do you know, Marianne, that if you worked very hard, it's possible that you might achieve a voice, something like that of the late Laverne. Oh, thank you, Myra. But I'm just studying at the Academy to be with Rusty. I just want to get married and settle down. Oh. Uh, to fulfill yourself as a woman, no doubt. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, it's only natural. Natural? Oh, my dear, Marianne. Don't you realize it? Well, uh, never mind. It's getting late. We have a big day tomorrow. We'll talk about it another time. Well, yes, my dear. But, um, mm -hmm. but we haven't talked about Rusty. Oh, that. Well, don't you worry your pretty little head. I have that well in hand. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <gasps> well, did you hear her? Never even heard of the Andrew sisters. Well, I scarcely dared mention Ella Mae Morris in the Cow Cow Boogie. I must say, you showed remarkable restraint. And four children. I mean, it's not enough that she and that ape merely want to reproduce themselves. She wants to have four. Well, half the world is starving now, and if population continues at the present rate... Well, I... I know, I know. Famine by 1974. And you can forget about plankton and seaweed, because there's not going to be enough of that to go around. Oh. I've heard this speech so many times. Your goal is... My goal is the destruction of the last vestigial traces of traditional man. In order to... Realign the sexes. While... Decreasing population. Thus... Increasing human happiness. And... Preparing humanity for its next stage. Prop. Also, bullshit. Would you care to explain that? Gladly. I thought we were going to invite Marianne over here tonight so that we could talk. Oh, never mind. I make all your fantasies come true, and then all you say is I make everything nasty. Well, I'm doing everything I can. I'll give you Marianne if you want, and Rusty, and Letitia Van Allen. The only person I can't deliver is Buck Lona, a real piece of history. Will you stop it? Oh, you behave like a real child. Forgive me. Oh. 
I just want to make you happy. That's all. fun-loving California sweetheart. We have here a fine selection of all your favorite treats. F is for French fry. P is for pizza. P is for pretzel. O is for apple. And I almost forgot. There's me. Do you like some banana? And me. Oh, a big bite. Isn't that good? Let me see. Some peanut butter. Do you like some peanut butter? With a little jelly. With some whipped cream. Mmm. So good. H is for hot dog. Dick Tarzan still provides the last word on soft man's relationship to hard environment. And Tarzan and the Amazons, 1945. Tarzan and the Amazons? You mean you like that? As I've just indicated, it was a masterpiece. But it's trash. I mean, there isn't a single moment of truth. I mean, it's not, uh, real. Whatever real means, is that necessarily good? Could the real Christ have possessed a fraction of the radiance of H.B. Warner in the first King of Kings, or Jeffrey Hunter in the second? <laughs> heavy, heavy. At any rate, back to Johnny Weissmiller, who swung out of the trees into our hearts with his leading lady, Brenda Joyce. Brenda Joyce. The only contemporary figure we can point to is James Bond, who invariably ends up with a blowtorch aimed at his crotch. Here's Breckenridge. Ah, Uncle Buck. May I have a word with you? Well, I'm in the middle of a class. Only take a minute. All right. This won't take long. Miss Breckenridge, what you're doing here is downright unwholesome, undermining all my good work. Do you think lying to people is good for them? Do you think telling someone who's got cancer that he doesn't need the operation is the right thing to do? Well, if he's had the operation and, and the case is terminal, why, well, you want him to be happy, wouldn't you? Have a happy frame of mind. Well, I can only conclude that you agree. What you have assembled here are the national dregs, the misfits and erotics, in short, the fuck-ups of our culture. That ain't so. They are the carefully selected candidates for future stardom. Bullshit. You can't talk to me like that, young lady. I'll have you out of here so fast your hair will curl. You just try it, your mother, and I'll take this place away from you. Lock, stock, and empathy class. You watch your step, young lady, as for taking this place away from me. Why, <laughs> I don't even know whether uh, that man you claim you married, that uh, fag, son of a bitch, he was ever really even married to that fag. That student's was a classic stage lab, delivered so as to give the impression that the subject has been hit very hard in the mouth. It was first developed by Patricia Collins in The Little Foxes, 1941. Oh, thank you for the demonstration, Uncle Buck. Hello, Mr. 
Miss Van Allen. I thought this was your car. Anything I can do for you? Well, come to think of it, yes. There's a car been following me for quite some time. Want me to bust him? No. Introduce him. Oh, and uh, don't forget to remind me of the policeman's balls. Uh, I mean the police show. I wish to see Signorina Van Allen. I have a message for her I bring from Italy. Uh, your name, please? Mario Giuseppe Leonardo Guastaferri Stinginata Pastriani. Have a seat. There's enough for all of you. Jobs, I mean. Letizia, bellissima. Well, what do you know, the pizza man? Uh, when do you deliver? Signorina, at last I find you. Find me? Why, I'm in the yellow pages. A Federico Fellini, the great director, tell me to look you up. Oh, Fellini. Oh, yes. He's my friend. Did he say, look me up or eat me up? Uh, <laughs> uh, no pinching. <laughs> Beautiful one. You are the reason I come so far from Italy. I could not stand it no more. Ever since I see your pictures, I hear your record, I am in love with you. I, hundreds of women have thrown themselves at my feet, but I love only you. I am on fire. Oh, I'll put your fire out. <laughs> now, what can I do for you as if I didn't know? I don't look for a job. Amore mio, I look for love. Mm. I look for you, to be with you, to make a love with you. Mm. This is too much, too soon. In my country, to wait for love is to burn by inches. Oh, you got it all measured out. When Mario makes love, the birds sing, the bells ring. And everything swings. <laughs> You're the wildest salesman since Columbus. <laughs> Columbus. He was a good lover, too. Yeah, I know. Uh, he raised the hello with Isabella. <laughs> Arrivederci. Hundreds of broads at his feet. <laughs> Get a test on this guy. A screen test? No. Blood test. Hmm? Good morning, Uncle Buck. I have information here regarding a certain mutual acquaintance named uh, Breckenridge. Stand up when a lady comes into the room, you son of a bitch. My dearly departed kinsman was never married, no how, no place, not to you nor nobody. You think you're pretty clever, don't you? <laughs> Smarter than a flea in a feather bed. You make me sad, Uncle. Really sad. <laughs> I believe you misunderstand my meaning, Myra. You're out. The con game didn't work. There's no record of any Myron Breckenridge being married in the whole United States. Nowhere in the United States, hmm? That's right. Do you know why that might be? Uh, American Airlines has uh, ten regular flights a day. I'd be glad to pay your fare back home. No record of my marriage to Myron exists in any of the United States for the excellent reason that we were married in Mexico. Monterey. O meu ganza faz tica tica bum tica. Vai eu cantar o tica tica bum tica. Damn disgrace, Buck. A man can't take his family to the movies without seeing some kind of filth. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now, listen, Charlie, you gotta get this bitch off my neck. She's making my life a living hell. Uh, maybe you could plant drugs on her. I mean filth, Buck. I saw this picture where people were fornicating. Fornicating! You mean, uh, really doing it? God's honest truth, Buck. I've seen it three times, my tell you. Ooh, who? Three times? You gotta know your enemy if you're gonna beat them. It's sick. What is this business coming to? 
destroying the moral fibers of this country. America, I love you, and there's a hundred million others like me. Corrupting our youth. I've seen things, Buck, that would turn your stomach. It's not your basic naked women or the fornication. It's the fags, the dykes, and every kind of perversion. Banana split. With nuts? The reason he doesn't want to take Nancy to the prom is that he thinks he has the clap. And he knows that she wants to ball him. And he's afraid that he will. I mean, it's a, a real selfless act, you know? <coughs> Make yourself at home, such as it is. Oh, Uncle Buck really did himself proud this time. Of course, <laughs> I'm only kissing kin and all. Oh, recently Marianne was telling me that I <laughs> have a tendency to pick on you. Yeah, you sure do. Oh. Well, if I spend my valuable time on you, it's because I feel you have a glimmer of potential talent. And I'm trying to help you walk like normal people. Look at the way you're leaning to one side right now. You obviously have a physical problem. Marianne told me about your back. I broke four ribs, and even so, I finished the last half. Very admirable, I'm sure. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like you to stand up and walk over to the door first, and then back here to me. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, I missed that. What was that again? Rusty. Now, it's been my experience in the past, in problems like yours, that it sometimes helps if you dance. Imagine you're listening to the big sound of Glenn Miller. You can keep time by snapping your fingers. I feel silly. And turn around. You know, all you really need is something to remind you to to stand straight. Now, now, tell me, where were the ribs broken, Rusty? The floor was busted right here, which is why I'm kind of pulled over this side. Uh, let me see. Uh, like this? <laughs> no, I want to see your back. Take off your shirt. But there's nothing to see. I mean, all of the ribs are inside me. They were broken. I know where ribs are, Rusty. But I want to see the exact point where the muscle is pulling. Oh, your T-shirt, too. <laughs> Haven't got X-ray eyes. <clears throat> well, <laughs> you certainly are in good condition, Rusty. Well, I work out some. <laughs> Not like I ought to or used to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Would you face the wall with your arms at your side, hands pressed very flat against the wall? But Miss Mara, you're jerking my pants. Will you now. do as I say? Now, I believe the problem's a little lower down, around the small of the back. I'd say around the lumbar region. Aha! Okay. Gotcha! Is that the Chattanooga choo choo? Yes, yes. Whack 29. Stay 
station about a quarter to four. <laughs> Read the magazine and then you're in Baltimore. Dinner in the diner, darling, could be fine. And to have your hand in Carolina. When you hear the whistle blow and eat to the bar, then you know that Tennessee is not very far. Shovel all the coal in, gotta keep it rolling. was my valley. A certain party at the station. Sure to get later. Oh, late. oh, I used to call funny faces. She's gonna cry until I tell her that I'll have her roll. So Chattanooga, Juju, won't you Juju me home? Chattanooga, Chattanooga, oh boy. Is that the chair? Track 29. And Jack, she means that she can't afford. I can't afford to board a Chattanooga to What have you got in there? Oh, God, my face. You say you have? Uh-huh, but not a nickel to spare. Well, I do. Who would it You leave the Pennsylvania station about a quarter to four. Read a magazine. Then you're in Baltimore, dinner in the diner, nothing could be finer than to have your hand in eggs in Carolina. When you hear the whistle blowing eight to the bar, then you know that Tennessee is not very far. Shut up for all the golden, got to keep it rolling. Whoa, Chattanooga, back you are. Chattanooga, don't you? There you are. Remind me to start taking diet pills again. The zipper keeps getting strong. Yeah. Miss Van Allen's car just came through the gate. God damn. Ah, oh, Mary Allen. I'm meaning to tell you I'm seriously considering recommending you to Letitia Van Allen. Thanks. Well, you don't sound too pleased about it. You make me feel as though I've just announced a plague of locusts. Well, what's the matter, Marianne? Is it rusty? Can I do anything to help? Oh, Mary, I'm so worried about him. Oh, there, there. <clears throat> Busted. The first time wasn't his fault at all, but he was on parole. And this time, they'll really put him away. Nonsense. I do nothing of the kind. You just leave that to me. Why? Is there something you can do? Why, of course, my dear. It's only the law. Ah, oh, Letitia Van Allen. Kids and I sure appreciate these visits, Letitia. Particularly the scholarship boys. By the way, um, speaking of the uh, scholarship fund... They say she goes to bed with all the actors she represents. Oh, I'll talk about that another time. Yes. She must be a marvelous woman. You know, I think all the gay boys are going to take the business over. There's no more studs around anymore. Everyone's popping pills and uh, smoking grass. Oh, Miss Van Allen. Yes. Uh, this Miss Breckenridge who'll be with us teaching-like until she goes back east on her before September 3rd. Permit me to say that you are the only brain comparable to my late husband's. Oh, I appreciate that, honey. But uh, what did your late husband do? He wrote books about the movies. Oh, was he gay? Ostensibly, he was Americana, a terraline hose chick baller from East 57th Street. But underneath it all... He was gay. Sit down, honey. You sound like a good agent. You see, Miss Van Allen, Uncle Buck and I deal in myths. And movie stars are like gods and goddesses. 
When one fades, another promptly takes its place. Because the human race requires that the pantheon always be filled. And you and I must seek out the glittering few that are the new stars of our race reborn. That is the damnedest thing I ever heard about this business. You have all the kinky angles that are in right now. What about studs? Heaven. I mean, have you any that I don't know about? Uh, only one that's really a material. I know you'd like him. He's our pride and joy. He's the last stronghold of masculinity in this Disneyland of perversion. Looks like he's got quite a lot going for him. What's his name? Rusty Godowski. I am sure these kids should try to walk before they can run. Anyway, uh, Rusty's been busted. Arrested for what? Violation of parole. Perhaps you could help. Mm, I'll look into it. I have a judge by the... <laughs> oh, Letitia, they don't call you the queen of the casting couch for nothing. Mm, from what I understand, they're voting me a special Academy Award. An Oscar? No, a golden phallus. And let me tell you, someday we'll have our own stable of studs. A steady stream of sturdy studs. Oh, a boy bank where credit is always good. Sort of a like a day plan. God bless America. God help America. A lay a day. Hmm. That reminds me. I simply must go. Uh, identical twins. I'm the only one that knows the difference. Yeah. Yeah, get me uh, Judge Frederick D. Cannon. Keep ringing the judge's chambers. He sleeps there between sessions. Well, never mind how I know. No nation can long endure the onslaught of godless communism which permeates the very warp and woof of Southern California. Eternal alertness to what your neighbor is up to is the price of freedom. Miss Breckenridge, keep your eye on him at all times. And remember, the commies will use every infernal device known to man to worm their way into our churches and supermarkets, which is why only the National Rifle Association stands between a free America and a communist takeover. With this in mind, we may yet curb the lawlessness and degenerate values as expressed by the Kremlin and upheld by the Supreme Court of the United States. Well, thank you, sir. Come along, Rusty. Say, Ollie. What? What time is it? It's nearly half past. Thank you, Ollie. Gentlemen, we take great pleasure in presenting to you the world famous recording star, Miss Letitia Van Allen and the Van Allen Dancers. We gotta taste all the fruit 
Hell, jail wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for all those faggots. There's always some fruit after you. That shouldn't bother you, Rusty. Well, the whole idea makes me want to puke. A man should act like a man. Know what I mean? How should a man act? Don't leave a thing to shine. He should ball chicks, that's how. But only if he loves them. Cigars, cigarettes, chewing gum. Bananas. What is normal? <laughs> well, it's what everyone does. I mean, it's what the majority of society does most. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do something just for the thrill of it. Make every point while you pace every joint on the road. You gotta taste all the fruit. All the fruit. Ooh, all the fruit. You gotta taste all the fruit. I'm a girl on the scene. I can give you what you want, but you gotta come home with me. I've got some real good loving and I've got some in store. When I get through throwing it on you, you gotta come back for more. Girls and things will come by the dozen. That ain't nothing but what's so loving. Good looking thing, let me light your candle, cause baby, I'm sure how to handle this. Yes, I am. Mm. Speak louder than words, and I'm a girl with a great experience. I know you had you another, but I can love you better than any other. Take my hand, come with me. I want to prove every word I say. I want to love you, baby. I'm gonna have you every day. Come back for more. Girls and things come by the dozen. That ain't nothing but bricks so loving. Good looking thing, let me light your candle, cause baby, I'm sure how to handle mm, Yes, I am. I still think a guy should ball chicks. Ah-ha-ha. How's it going, girls? Just great, sweetie. Wait a minute. Can I stay? Ah-ha-ha. That's right, sweetie. Uh, how's your poker game going, sweetie? Oh, oh great, great. <laughs> great. <laughs> great. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Oh, you got him, Kid Barlow. You got him. Ah. Kid Barlow was the fastest gun at Republic Pictures. <laughs> Damn was the day. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, every time I look at them old flicks of mine in the morning on TV, I get a lump right here in my throat. Oh, we was Saturday afternoon for the whole world. Until our time of pictures just rode off in the sunset. And what's taking our place? <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll tell you what, perversion. Right. That's what's taking our place. Right. Communist perverts turning out filth. Some midfields of clover, twas just a little over a hundred years ago. A handful of strangers, they faced many dangers to make their country grow. It's now quite a nation, a land of inspiration, where bells of freedom ring. It's your land, it's my land, a great do or die land, where everyone can sing. America, I love you, you're like a sweetheart of Is touching each boundary line Just like a little baby Climbing its mother's knee America, I love you And there's a hundred million others like me Well, how was the beef teriyaki? Oh, worse than the chow mein. What's that? Swedish massage. What do you do with it? I beat you with it. Does it hurt? You bit your ass. Something's wrong here someplace. Good evening, Rusty. Gee, it's uh, really nice that Letitia Van Allen wants to represent Mary Ann, isn't it? Yes, very nice. About your back. I've spoken to Uncle Buck's chiropractor, and she's going to arrange a special brace. But she couldn't be here tonight, so she asked me to take an exact tracing of your spine. So that she'll know what to do. So if you'll just slip off your shirt, we'll get right to work. Step on the scale, and we'll measure you. Uh, uh, take off those atrocious cowboy boots. They'll break the scale. Oh, no, they won't. Do exactly as I tell you. You don't want me to have to tell the judge that you've been uncooperative, do you? I guess I'm full of hoes. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right. Now we'll need your weight. Um, <clears throat> which is 174 and your height, which is Six, one, and a quarter. Well, the chart's filling up nicely. You can get down. Now, we'll need a urine specimen. Step behind the screen. But, uh... But... <laughs> What's the matter? I don't know. I guess I'm, uh, what do you call, peace shy. <laughs> well, don't be. Just relax. We have plenty of time. Oh. 
Bravo. Now then. It out. Perhaps we better wait for the doctor. Do as you're told, Rusty. What do you want me to do? Well, it's very simple. I don't know what you're so frightened of. All I want you to do is loosen your belt and say, ah. Oh. Now then, take a deep breath. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. 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 Turn your head to the side and cough. <coughs> Bend over the table, please. There's more where that came from. Bend over the table. I want to take your temperature. But not there. Certainly there. I don't know, Rusty. You've been showing a very suspicious reluctance. I think you have a disease you've been hiding from me. Well, no, Miss Myra. Then face down on the table. Hands up here. All right. Now, this is just so you won't move while I do the tracing. There we go. Now, then, bottoms up. Hey. Very still. I don't want that thermometer broken, Rusty. Tell me, have you ever suffered from uh, tuberculosis? No. Heart disease? No. Chicken pox? No. Small pox? No. Measles? No. Venereal disease? No. Be careful, Rusty. I said no. We'll see. They checked me out in Mexico. I had the Wasserman test. Really? Hmm. What are you doing? I'm preparing you for your brace. Oh, Christ. What's the matter, Rusty? I said, oh, Christ. What is it, Rusty? You're playing some kind of joke on me. I know you are. You're playing some kind of joke. Oh, well, this is no joke, Rusty. I'm in deadly earnest. You have a lot to learn. All you men have a lot to learn. And I have taken it upon myself to teach you. What do you mean? This is the most important part of your education, the part your teachers fail to instruct you in. Take off your hat. It's called balling. And I know how to do that. That's what you think. Did you know you have a temperature? No, I didn't. Well, you do. But no matter. I shall cure what's wrong with you. What are you going to do? I shall bore you, Rusty. It's very simple. And now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> what you've all been waiting for the wildest, fuckingest bronc in the world. He's never been ridden before. Cherry, the man killer. <laughs> oh, well, what nature intended is not always good for us, Rusty. You think that being a man is such a simple thing. A man should ball chicks, you said. Well, I tried to explain it to you, but you wouldn't listen. So I'm afraid it will require a practical demonstration. Oh, my God, Jesus, you'll kill me. I won't kill you, Rusty. <laughs> I'll just educate you. You and the rest of America must be demonstrated to you practically that there is no such thing as manhood. It died with Bert Lancaster and Vera Cruz. Your manhood was taken by Errol Flynn and Clark Gable. I am only going to supply you with the finishing touches. Oh, God. I reckon none of you northern folks ever heard of Texas Callahan making love to his gal. Well, you're going to hear it now.
Can I go now? Yes. You can go. Now. Well, aren't you going to thank me for all the trouble I've taken? Thank you, ma'am. You know what, Ollie? What? I feel like a mouse. We had to do it. It hurt me more than it did him. Poor Are you alone? Come right up. Why are you so fascinated by the girl? But having raped Rusty's manhood, I must now complete the cycle and seduce his girl. Only then will my victory be complete. Thus exuding power over both sexes and indeed over life itself. Boy, she's a tough customer. What are you moping about? She's so sweet. Come on. Marianne. Oh, Mother. Why, Marianne? What's the matter? Rusty's gone again. Gone? Where? I don't know. I just don't understand. Well, let me fix you a drink. It'll soothe your nerves. 
didn't he give you any explanation at all? No, nothing. It was frightening. Just that he was sick of me. Sick of women. Sick of women? He actually said that? Yes. Well, I'm certain he didn't mean sick of you. It was sick of women in general, perhaps. <coughs> well, I don't know. Both, I guess. <coughs> Men. They're all alike. But don't you worry. We'll find him. <coughs> We've just got to. I may never see him again. Of course you will. You'll see everything will work out just fine. I'm so worried. I just can't go back there. Oh. You don't have to. You can stay here with me. Oh, no, I couldn't. I insist. Are you sure? Absolutely. It's really no bother at all. Really, we we'll just find you something to wear. Mm. Those are men's pajamas. Oh, <laughs> so they are. How indiscreet. Well, you've had a very trying day, Marianne. I really feel you should go right to bed. I don't know how to thank you. You've been so sweet to me, Myra. And don't you worry about Rusty. It's either them or me, I told him. And of course it will be you, my darling. Now, let's have a nice girly evening. And I'll tell you how I lost my virginity. You tell me how you lost yours. Jeez. There we go. Oh, Rusty. Oh. There, there, my dear. He's only a man and not good enough for you. How well I remember my own puppy love. No shit. This is Letitia. Rusty's at the beach house with me right now. I'm calling to say thanks. Oh, I, I'm so glad you liked him. Uh, is it the right color? Well, I guess so. It's the usual color. Didn't you ever make it with him? Not in the classic way, no. Well, I'm, I, I hope he sleeps well in his new home. I wouldn't entrust him to just anyone. Good night, dear lady. Oh, well, good night. Come on, honey. Let's take another trip around the world. Darling, I've known you ever since you was a cough and a spit. Gee. I've watched you become the dream of every parent this side of San Diego. Wow. You're a fine boy, Charlie. A fine boy. Aren't you? Gee. Uh, thanks, Uncle Bucky. You know what I've always thought of you ever since you did that morning television show on ABC. I can tell you now, Uncle Buck, that... Well, you've always been my idol, and uh, I've lost more fights over you at UCLA than anything else. I'm very moved to hear you say that, very moved. Also, I'm pleased to hear you're a fighter, because this uh, Meyer Breckenridge is more than a match for most men, more than a match. Well, I'll do my best, Uncle Buck. And if my best isn't good enough, well, that's too bad. Not quite, Charlie, not quite. If your best ain't good enough, you might just well pack up and move to Milwaukee. Uh, there she is. Remember, the uh, velvet hand and the iron glove. Come in, Myra. Okay, let her rip. This better be good. Who's this? Looks like the late, late show. Myra, this is Charlie Flagler, Flagler and Flagler. I thought you two should get together and sort out the one or two little problems we've been having. Problems, Uncle Buck? I don't have any problems. All I know is that you owe me $900,000, and the price of real estate is going up every day. I think you should know, Myra, that uh, Charlie's dad and me have been pals ever since he handled me when I had that row with the Blue Network. I, I guess that we value Mr. Loner's account more than any single non-corporate account. Like Dad always says, Buck Loner has a real reputation uh, for being like a straight shooter. When you two lovebirds are finished, perhaps you'll tell me what lousy, dirty trick you're up to now. 
No lousy tricks, Mrs. Breckenridge. I am simply here to defend my client's interest, which in this case is your alleged claim to like half the value of this Westwood property. Alleged? Alleged. That marriage certificate is an out and out phony. Oh. Especially when you have to fight your own family for what's rightfully yours. Honey, honey, honey. We don't want to take what's yours. That's the last thing on our mind. But we got to make sure you're entitled to it. You might be an impersonator saying you are who you are. And after Gertrude gave you that $200 back in Philadelphia to pay for the abortion of the daughter that wrecks all drugs, you knocked up and refused to marry. The point is, can you prove you were married? That's all. Proof will arrive before the end of the week in the person of Dr. Randolph Spencer Montag. Montag? The great dental psychiatrist? He was a witness to our wedding. I trust his word will be sufficient. Let me make it perfectly clear that it might. In any case, my price has gone up to an even million dollars. reaches me at oh, every yeah. level, from uh, lower uh, ed to super ego. Oh. After all, I realize that our relationship was always oh. much more than that simply of analyst to patient. I am also to your dentist. Now, Myra, I've got other patients I'm who need me, so. Spit out now, dear. Oh, you've got no. such lovely boobs. They're no. such a comfort. Oh, oh, such a comfort to me. Now I said 15, uh, Myra. Uh, Open up. 15%. I'm in L.A. tomorrow. I'd have kind of you doc coming all this way to help our little Myra. Of course, we all mean to do the right thing by her. Then cut the crap and hand over the cash. Naturally, we are uh, not about to question the probity of such a well-known person and author as Dr. Montag. Yes? New York calling Mr. Flagler. Which Mr. Flagler? Mr. Flagler Jr. Take it, Junior. In the bathroom, you idiot. I have to go to the bathroom. You get to the movies much, Doctor? I say, did you get to the movies much, Doctor? I was wondering what you thought about all the pornography we had. Pornography? Uh, I was wondering what you thought about it in our movies. I've never seen any of your movies. I mean, our current American picture, which is loaded with smut. Smut, yes. Uh, uh, listen, you know could, uh, about, uh, 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 attention, every, everybody. Uh, 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 what, uh, as what you, you all know, uh, uh, that was a uh, call uh, uh, from our, uh, our New York office. What did they say? Oh, uh, Dad, um, before we get into that, I, th I think it might be nice at this time to put everyone in the picture as to the background. Uh, would you tell him to? Shut up and get to the point. The point is, Mrs. Breckenridge, that no record of your husband's death exists in New York City or state. Steve, I... Just remember, Get my, these people me. don't screw around. Everything's legal and above board, not like in some places I can mention south of the border down Mexico way. <laughs> Listen, I say the man's dead, you unmitigated shit. And that means he's dead. Oh, I'll admit his body was never found, that's true. 
He died in a car accident outside the Bank of America. <laughs> Beverly Hills branch. There is not one iota of evidence that he is dead, and we are not going to pay you one single penny. It's D, right? Randolph, I believe the moment of truth has finally arrived. Go get him. Gentlemen, I am Myron Breckenridge. Uncle Buck, your fag nephew, became your niece two years ago in Copenhagen and is now free as a bird and happy in being the most extraordinary woman in the world. <laughs> and I thought I'd fell in love with a man. <laughs> That's the ball game. <laughs> uh, Stanley, what time is it? It's about half past... Something went wrong. Either you keep me on here, or I'll tell the world that... Buck Loner's fag nephew became his niece two years ago in Copenhagen. I could kill him. I could kill him if I could get away with it. Uh, strike that. Anyway, thank God I never slipped in the old Buck Loner special. Myra, don't. It spoils it. All right, whatever you say, Marianne. But I do love being with you like this. I'm sorry, Myra. I just can't. I wish I could, really. Love isn't always a matter of sex, you know. I know. And I really do love you as you are. I even like it when you touch me. Up to a point. I don't know. I just can't let myself go. That's the way I am. What is it, Rusty? No, that's finished. But someone like him. Someone gentle. <laughs> Rusty, gentle. I thought he was violent. No. Whatever gave you that idea? It's because he was so gentle that I loved him. He never grabs you like the other boys. Oh, you are an angel, Myra, and I do love you. I really do. I just can't, you know? Yes, of course, I know. If only there were some man like you, I'd really fall, I would. But not like this. If only you were a man. It's a dangerous thing, ambition. Ruined Mickey Mouse's whole career. Well, now it's eight bars and out, honey. You are no more than a Linda Darnell paper doll. A Disney cow that got over the fence. You got ambitious. You were great in Cinemascope and Technicolor, but you can't cut it in black and white.
do remember the day in the desert. I'll remember. Where are my tits? Where are my tits? <laughs> Good morning, nurse. You get them. Okay. Ah, what do we got here? When you get the 103 cell, well, hey, there's a compact account. All right, 40 chin ups, baby. <laughs> ah, what are you doing? Riding home for money? What are you saying there? Hey, Dustin Hoffman, the midnight cowboy. Hi, Charlie. Soul food there. <laughs> Don't let him get down here, baby. Oh, hair, hair. Watch that. You go crazy. You got her get hair in the stuff. Huh? Are we conscious? I am. Not sure about you. The lost moment. Uh, Martin Gable, 1949. 47. 47, that's silly of me. The heiress was 1949. The, that's Willie Wilder. I thought of that because of Henry James. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get a lot of rest before you start socializing? You're a very popular young fella. <laughs> You wouldn't understand the way I feel about Marianne. That she's Donald Duck straws and peps it in toothpaste. Double. 